Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word epiphany is a combination of two Greek words. First of all, epi, it's a preposition, E-P-I, and it means upon. The other Greek word is phaino, which means to shine. Phaino. So if you combine epi and phaino, you get epiphany. And what that means, the word epiphany means to shine upon. Christ, our light, shines upon you. Epiphany also means manifest. Christ is manifested as the Son of God in human flesh. It also means to appear. Jesus appears to us as our Savior. So you have an epiphany moment when you suddenly understand something. When something is now new. Saul of Tarsus had an epiphany moment when he was converted to faith in Christ on the road to Damascus. You had an epiphany moment when God brought you out of the darkness of unbelief and into the light of Christ. We will learn today that Jesus is your epiphany star. He is your light and your salvation. He is God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father. He is the light of the world, and he is the light that shines through you for the sake of others. And it's his word that is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. The Magi said to Herod, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we, his, we, for we saw his star when it rose. Whose star? His star. Who sent the star? God sent the star. And so the Magi saw the star which God sent. Later this star appeared again and it guided the Magi to Jesus. What? led the Magi to Jesus. The light of God's star led the Magi to Jesus. It showed them where Jesus resided. The scriptures also led the, wise, the Magi to Jesus. Herod didn't know where the Christ was to be born. He was ignorant of the scriptures. But after asking the chief priests and the scribes, Herod learned from Micah chapter 5, verse 2, that the Savior, the Christ, is to be born in the town of Bethlehem. What led the Magi to Jesus? The scriptures led the Magi to the town of Bethlehem and then to Jesus. They traveled to the town where Jesus resided. So, both the star and the scriptures led the Magi to Jesus. What do the scriptures show us? Well, first of all, the law shows us our sin. We learn from Genesis chapter 3 that Adam and Eve listened to Satan and ate the forbidden fruit. As a result, their righteousness was stolen from them by the devil. They had fallen into sin and death. They, Adam then hid from God among the shadow of the garden. He didn't want his sin revealed. He tried to cover up his guilt with fig leaves. We are all children of Adam and Eve. We are their sons and daughters. The darkness of sin and death lives within us. We lack a true righteousness on our own. We sin in thought, word, and deed, in what we think and say and do. There is the sin of idolatry, 
and lust and gossip. We also live in the darkness of a fallen world. The shadow of death is all around us. Sin loves darkness and it hates the light. Sin tries to blot out the light of Christ. It refuses to come to the light of Christ. Jesus once said, everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. That's why more crimes are committed at nighttime rather than the daytime, because the criminal wants to do it under the cover. They don't want to be seen. And many sins are committed in the dark so that others cannot see them. Look at Herod. He lied when he told the Magi that he wanted to worship the infant Jesus, the newborn king. That was a flat-out lie. The truth is that Herod wanted to kill this newborn king. Herod wanted to, and he tried to blot out Jesus by killing all of the baby boys in Bethlehem that were two years old and, and younger. We don't want our sin exposed. And so we hold it in. We lack any kind of confession of them. But we try to lie. We try to cover them up. But nothing can be hidden from God. He knows all things, even your secrets. Don't be like Adam, hiding in the shadows, but be honest with God and with one another. Confess your sin and also hear God speak his forgiveness upon you. Repent, but also be absolved of your sin and live in the light of Christ. Darkness cannot illumine itself. Darkness cannot become light. They are opposites. And so we cannot become holy or righteous in and of ourselves. Unbelief cannot create faith. We need help. God must come to our rescue. He must bring light and salvation into our dark lives. And so the law shows us our sin, but most importantly, the gospel shows us our Savior, who is our light and our salvation. The Old Testament pointed to the Savior who was to come in the future. And so the Old Testament is full of prophecies, hundreds of them talking about Jesus. We learn that Jesus will be born of a virgin. We learn from Micah 5 that he will be born in the town of Bethlehem. We learn that he will be like Moses, yet greater. That he will be a king like David, but greater. That he will be a priest like Aaron, but yet even greater. We learn about all the miracles of Jesus. We learn also about how he will die and that he will also rise from the dead. After John the Baptist was born, Zacharias spoke of the coming Savior as our morning star in Luke chapter 1. Zechariah went on to talk about the Savior as a light to us who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and that he will guide our feet into the way of peace. So, when Jesus was born, he was born on a dark and silent night, but he was the light of the world. When the 40-day-old Jesus was presented in the temple, Simeon spoke of Jesus as a light who will bring revelation to the Gentiles. Our Old Testament reading for today from Isaiah talked about Jesus this way. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Yes, Jesus is that light who has come. He arises and he shines upon you. Isaiah's prophecy that nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising was fulfilled when the Gentile magi visited the newborn king. 
Isaiah went on to say that they shall bring gold and incense and they shall proclaim the praises of the, of the Lord. So all of the Old Testament prophecies about Jesus were fulfilled, were fulfilled in Christ our Savior, even Christ's death and his resurrection. When Jesus did die on Good Friday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, it was dark. It was dark. He took upon himself the darkness of our sin and the sin of the whole world. He suffered the wrath of God in your place. And he was the righteous sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He died for all. For Jew and Gentile, for Magi, for you and me and the whole world, Jesus was the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. And three days later, Jesus rose from the dead. He overcame the darkness of sin and death. He is the everlasting light. Jesus now lives and reigns forevermore. Darkness could not overcome Jesus, but Jesus overcame darkness, and he lives forevermore. Jesus is the light which has come. He arises and he shines upon you by means of his gospel. He is your light and your salvation. His glory has risen upon you. In Christ, your sins are forgiven. In Christ, you are declared not guilty, and the darkness of your sin is removed. The Magi could not find Jesus on their own. So the star and the scriptures led them to Jesus. What led you to Jesus? What caused you to believe in Jesus? You could not find Jesus on your own. You could not, by your own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ your Lord or come to him. You came to know Jesus as your light and as your, as your salvation by means of God's word. The Holy Spirit called you to faith in Jesus by the gospel. You were baptized in, by means of water and the word. And you now continue to hear God's word, which is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path all the way to heaven. The baptized are oftentimes dressed in a nice white gown, symbolizing the righteousness of Christ. And then they are given a candle, a candle to remind them that they, that they have received Christ, who is the light of the world. And then it is our prayer that the baptized may live in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming. That's what we also pray today in our collect, that the light of Christ may always continue to be with us. After you will receive communion this morning, the body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of all your sins, you will then sing the Nuke Diminis, which is Simeon's song. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of the people Israel. Yes, God gives and we receive. He speaks and we listen. And this is the flow of worship. The giving of gold and frankincense and myrrh were all a response of faith from the Magi. And so also, your singing, your offerings, your service within God's kingdom are all a response of faith. And you do them freely out of thanksgiving for all that God has done for you in Christ Jesus. So as children of light, you reflect the light of Christ. Others see Christ in in you and you love and serve the neighbor you reveal to others Christ who is the one and only Savior 
Who is Jesus? He is your epiphany star. He is your light and your salvation. He is God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father. He is the light of the world. He is the light that shines through you for the sake of others. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus and the life everlasting. Amen.